So we've been talking about the widgets that are available to us, and they are available to us because of the particular theme and plugins we have. So whenever you get a, a theme, one of the things that I like to do is to go look at the widget screen here to see, oh, I have a new feature, I have that feature, and so forth. So these are the ones that are built in. And again, no, most of them are not that useful, except for text. So if we wanted to add more widgets, oftentimes it's via a theme or a plugin. So let's uh, explore plugins. Go ahead and, and uh, hover your mouse over plugins on the left side. And first go to installed plugins. On our default WordPress, we had two built in. We had something called Akismet, and we have Hello Dolly. We added Duplicator. So plugins can come with a theme or can be independent. And plugins give us more features and oftentimes widgets. So this built in one of Hello Dolly. Uh, this is this is almost a joke nowadays. This plugin does nothing. Uh, it's there. It's it, look at the description. This is not just a plugin. It symbolizes the hope and enthusiasm of an entire generation summed up in two words. Blah blah blah. It's it's fake, uh, but it comes built in with WordPress. It doesn't do anything. I've never really done anything with it. Yeah. Who cares? It does nothing of importance except take up resources. Um, a Kismet, on the other hand, is a very useful plugin because this is the one that helps us prevent spam. By default, WordPress lets people write comments on your site, which means it lets spammers write comments on your site. But if you've got a plugin like A Kismet or a bunch of other ones, they can help stop the spam. Now we can have as many plugins as we want, and we can have them installed, or in I mean activated or inactivated. And I'm going to make some recommendations here. Only use the plugins you need. You may be able to download four versions of a Twitter plugin. Uh, and you may be able to activate them all. They're all going to be kind of fighting with each other, trying to do the same thing, depending how they're programmed. Uh, so have one Twitter plugin, have one chat plugin, have one shop plugin. Don't have two different shopping cart plugins, three different chats plugins. They may all be conflicting with each other. So multiple ones may conflict with each other. Multiple ones of the same use. You know, I'll talk about a great SEO plugin in a moment. There's another one that's really good. Don't put them both at the same time though. They're both trying to do the same thing. I'll mention that plugin in a moment. But uh, here, uh, you want to only use the plugins you need. And one of them for each task because you may have multiple ones installed, uh, but you have to then activate them. We have to, in, we have to install and we have to activate. Don't have many inactive plugins laying around, laying about. Meaning, notice right now in that plugin screen, Two are inactive, one is active. How can you tell? This one is blue, which is active, and it says deactivate it. These two are white, which say activate them. At the top it also says you have, in total, three plugins, one active, two inactive, one's got an update available, we'll talk about updates later. But here, if I were to view the active screen, duplicators active, and in the, the 
inactive, I've got Akismet and Hello Dolly. And under All, I can see at a glance that the active ones are blue. And what I'm seeing in my notes, don't have many inactive plugins laying around, that you don't need. This goes back again to the need thing of it. I am going to recommend Akismet as one of the good plugins. Akismet. At the moment, we're not going to activate it because it needs a little bit of a setup. I'm not going to delete it, however, because I'm going to use it eventually. I need it. I'm never going to use Hello Dolly, so simply leaving it inactive is not good enough. Because all of these plugins, even if they're inactive, are checking back on the WordPress mothership, the, the WordPress server, and they're checking every once in a while, is there a new version? Because just like any software, plugins uh, keep getting improved upon and new versions appear every once in a while. Maybe one every month, maybe one every six months, maybe one every week. I don't know. All these plugins vary. But these plugins automatically are going to be checking back on WordPress.org, is there a new version? So even if you're never going to use a certain plugin, it's going to use some of your resources. It's going to take up space on your server. It's going to take up your bandwidth, checking. And that's why I'm saying only have installed the plugins that you need. You can have them un inactive if you want. But again, only keep the ones that you need. The downside of plugins. They take up server space. They could slow down your site. They could conflict with other plugins. They use your bandwidth. That just means that it's, uh, you know, uh, using uh, internet connections. It's uh, your plugin is checking WordPress.org. Is there a new version? The upside of plugins. Extra features. They add extra features. such as chat, e-commerce, social media, backups. And really, that's, I'm sure there's others we can think of, but that's a big one right there. The big upside is you get extra features on your site that are not built in. Or even if you have some features built into your theme, there's probably a plugin that will do something even better. Any questions so far? So all of this is to say, on this particular site, we're eventually going to use Akismet. We're never going to use Hello Dolly. So what do we do about it? Press delete. We can always bring it back, but you're hardly ever going to use it, so go ahead and click delete. It's going to confirm. Are you sure you're about to delete this? All of these files will be removed. All of the supporting files on the server. Go ahead and click yes, delete these files. And now we've got these two plugins one that is active and that we're going to use later today one that is inactive and we will use later. And we'll talk about uh, updates. That's a big discussion to have a little later. A kismet used for uh, to help prevent spam comments on your site. It's free. 
although it does uh, recommend that you give a donation. A lot of these things related to WordPress operate like that. It's known as the freemium model. It's not free, it's not premium. Free obviously means that it's free, you can download it, use it, it's free. Premium means you need to pay for it. And in the middle is freemium. There are some aspects of it that are uh, f free, and then there are some aspects that you might need to pay for. How much? It's going to depend on the plugin, the plugin author, and all of that. Um, ranging between five dollars and ninety-nine dollars. There's a huge range. Uh, but most of the time you will be able to accomplish really good things with the free version of the plugins. Because plugins are also made from made by third-party companies, meaning they don't come directly from WordPress. The WordPress company doesn't make these plugins usually. It's usually regular people. Uh, you know, a design studio or someone working out of their garage or, or whatever. People, companies, third parties, people besides the WordPress parent company oftentimes make a bunch of plugins. And so, if it's a good plugin, it really works for you, it does what you need, and they have a little donation button, why not give a donation? Five dollars. Maybe don't buy that latte today and give someone uh, a few dollars thanking them for the for the plugin so one of the plugins I recommend is a kismet here's another one that I recommend um, Yoast SEO for optimizing your site for the search engines, for Google, for Bing, for Yahoo, etc. People are going to search a search engine nowadays. They're not going to take out that phone book and find you. Or less people will do that nowadays. Most people are going to search on Google, on Bing, they're going to ask their phone, they're going to search. And therefore this is a huge topic of search engine optimization. But you can't use uh, Google or Bing you use this to help you with Google and Bing. And so this big talk of, topic of SEO is better addressed in my SEO class, which is going on right now, actually. The fourth day will be this week, but the class starts again some other month. Uh, Wednesdays, I've mentioned it here, Wednesdays, uh, 12.30 noon in this room. We have the SEO class. We have one day left, but if you come for the last day, this Wednesday, um, it's it, one of the activities there is people can volunteer their site. I'll put it up on the board here, and I will give a quick SEO analysis, what's good, what's bad, what it needs, and then hopefully you take the class for deeper understanding next time. But this plugin, which we'll, we'll see in a little bit, this plugin helps you connect your site with I, I, helps you connect your site to the search engines, helps you get found, helps you write meta tags, meta descriptions, so that you can get found easier. It doesn't do it all for you, you still need an understanding of what you're doing, but this plugin is very good to help you with that. And this one is not the only one that does this, another big famous one is called All In One SEO Pack. I haven't used that one very much, but I have several colleagues that, that swear by it. And either or, you don't want to use them both because they're both doing the same thing and therefore conflicts, like I said. So one or the other. And they're both for you to optimize your site. Another one that I recommend is the one we've been using, we used last week and we'll use again this week, Duplicator. To back up your site, to transfer your site as a safety net. Because WordPress, you saw that if you delete that widget and don't put it in the inactive area, it's gone. 
and what if you had this widget where you had so many customized settings? It's gone. Well, if you make backups of your site every once in a while, like let's say once a month, and someone accidentally deletes some feature of your site, like a widget, if you've got that duplicator backup, you can bring the site back to life and it has all of those settings from that widget that were deleted. So it's a safety net, making a copy of your site, because the built-in import and export of WordPress is pretty terrible. It's pretty basic. This one and many others are better. Um, and it's, as I said also, this is useful for transferring your site, moving it from one server to another, copying it from your live account to your testing WAMP server to, to test it. Then we've got Jetpack. I'm going to say it's like the Swiss army knife of plugins. What's a Swiss army knife? And don't forget the toothpick. <laughs> Swiss army knife uh, is, you know, it's a knife that has got a, it's got a, a knife and a saw and a toothpick and tweezers and all that, all in one. You know, every Boy Scout needs one. Every Girl Scout needs one. Well, Jetpack is like that. It's a plugin that has many features, many extra features to add to your site, such as social sharing, uh, blog distribution, um, login security, etc. It has a lot of extra little features uh, because you can find all of these things in separate plugins, but this one is all in one. This one has all of these and many more extra features built into one plugin, totally free. All the ones that I usually mention are totally free. And then there's perhaps a few extra features that might be useful to purchase, and they range in price. Uh, but this is a, one of the ones, this and a few others that I'll mention are uh, these plugins that I, uh, my company installs on a new client. If they don't have these, we usually put these on because they're so useful. This one is another very useful one called Redirection. This one on the surface is a very boring plug-in, but the most exciting way for me to say it is fixes broken links. That still sounds boring. Well, broken links can be very detrimental for your SEO. The search engines might not rank you very well if you've got a lot of broken links on your site. Why would the search engines link to a site that's all broken? The search engines want to show sites that are well-designed, no broken links, good content, among other things. And so if your site's full of broken links, you've probably visited a site that you're reading something, you click to see the next, you click to see it, and then it's broken link, and then you say, this is dumb, this is amateur, this is annoying, and you leave, perhaps. And so that's going to happen on your site if you've got broken links. So redirection is going to check what links are broken on your site, and better yet, help you fix them to redirect. One of the common things is, well, what if I made my site, and I called it victor.com slash, and I had about us. And then later on I read, well, it's a little bit better for SEO to have victor.com slash about. Those are two different links. And this link was here out into the world for a long time. The search engine saw this link, maybe someone linked to that page at some point. And then if you go in and change your permalink in WordPress to simply about, you've made a broken link. Because everyone else that was pointing to this now doesn't exist anymore. About us is the new link. With redirection, it will, it will tell you that people are linking to this broken link. And then it will create a redirection. It will send people, when they try to go here, they'll automatically get redirected to here with the appropriate underlying server technology of the 301 redirect. Again, it's boring, but it fixes 
broken links so that the search engines see, oh great, this site doesn't have broken links, let's rank them better than the competition that does have broken links. It's called duplicator. It's called, it's called redirection, I mean. So that's a few of them. We'll talk about some more. And if you want, uh, if you want a heads up, because remember, uh, this month is part one. Next month is part two. Next month, which you know, is next week, is part two, where we're going to then focus on talking about uh, e-commerce. There's a plugin. There's several plugins out there for e-commerce to be able to sell products online. I'll mention a few right here, and then I'll mention the one we're going to use. Uh, one of the big ones is called. Uh, WooCommerce. I suddenly forgot its name for a moment. We've also got Shopify and we've also got WP eCommerce. All three of these are for eCommerce. All of them are for eCommerce, meaning you're only going to choose one of them. You're not going to run all three of them, that could be conflicts. The one that we're going to use in this class is the third one here, WP eCommerce. WooCommerce is more famous. WooCommerce is more powerful. But for a beginning class, it's too powerful. Too many features to deal with. A lot of the features that it deals, that it come, a lot of the a lot of the things that we need to use it with might not come built in. You have to add to it. So you have to add plugins to a plugin, basically. So out of the box. WooCommerce is not the best for beginners, I feel. WP eCommerce, out of the box, is ready to go. It doesn't have some of the features, it's not as powerful or as well rated and such, but whatever we learn on any of these plugins, we can apply back and forth to some, ver to some di variation. The screens might look a little different, the buttons might be a little different, but the concepts will be the same. Which one do you use for your business? Uh, for our businesses, usually we use Woo WooCommerce or WP Commerce. Uh, it really depends on the client's needs. Some of the most complex clients need the more complex plugin. Some of the simpler clients that sell simpler products need the simpler plugin. I haven't had a lot of experience with Shopify. Others on the team have, and they're all good. It just depends on what you need to sell and how you need to sell. Any time you can change your mind. That, unfortunately, no. Each one of these plugins believes they're doing it the best way. And so if you start on WooCommerce and say that's too complicated a month later, and you want to move over to WP Commerce, it's not that easy to go back and forth. You can, but, you, but it is a little bit of a, of a setup. And I will address it when we get to that point. So you, you do it. You, it is recommended for you to try them all yourself. We're going to do WP eCommerce together, but you can do WooCommerce on your own because all of this is free. You can run your WAMP server on ho at home and just play with this stuff and break it and make mistakes and learn. And the big thing you'll learn is that it's a bit difficult to go from platform to platform. They all think they do it the right way. Most famous. Sun is up and coming. Uh, it's getting a lot of good reviews and such. And most of these plugins, as I said, are created by third party companies not affiliated with WordPress. So there's a variety of quality and results and so forth. But WooCommerce actually uh, was recently bought by the WordPress company. They thought WooCommerce was the best of the, of the shopping cart plugins and they bought them. Uh, I believe uh, WooCommerce is is, uh, is headquarters in headquartered in South Africa, and they were bought. They they were there's the one of the biggest names in e-commerce. WordPress company bought them. They're gonna most likely integrate it into into WordPress in the coming years, I suppose. Uh, but they're all very good plugins. Yes, exactly. If you if you get the premium account, most likely that's the first place you'll see it, and maybe it'll trickle down to the freer versions. 
So those are some. That's a little bit of discussion on some plugins. There's others we'll talk about a little later. Uh, but um, if you want to start to look into it, we'll we'll do it together. Of course, we'll talk about WP e-commerce when the time comes. Any questions on our discussion on plugins? Let's see about uh, how do you add the plugins. We've done it once before, but now we'll do it again in more detail. Yes. Uh, is there a certain number that you can stay under? I know you said obviously keep adding them, and they might have a possibility of slowing them down. It depends on the plugins, it depends on your server, it depends on a bunch of interrelated things, so there's no actual answer about how many. On some sites we need to run like 15 of them for the full functionality. On some, you know, we get by with four, you know, the four or five that I mentioned. So it does depend on the plugin, on the server, various things. So <clears throat> let's, let's add an extra plugin. Here under Yoast SEO, I want to I want to check that one out. How that one works briefly. So how do I add a plugin here under? I can go to Add New on the menu here. I can also go to Add New right there. I'll go ahead and click Add New. <clears throat> this takes us to the plugin directory where we can see featured plugins, popular ones, recommended ones, and your favorite ones. As you keep running WordPress throughout the months and years, maybe you've got a few ones that you like that to use over and over, you can add them to your favorites. These featured ones, well, there's Jetpack, we'll talk about it later, there's Akismet. They come from, notice, this is like any other sort of like app store. You're gonna get a thumbnail, description, and then you're going to see ratings, which are very important because I might be looking for a brand new Twitter plugin and I see a thousand Twitter plugins, literally. How do I know what, which one to use? I look at this data right here. How many stars does it have? Why would I want a one-star Twitter plugin? Maybe better would be a five one or a four-star one. More stars is better, but also more reviews is better because you might see a perfect five-star plugin and it's got two reviews the theme author and his mom. And so here when you've got more, you know, does of a product, just like a just like a store, uh, uh, a restaurant. I'm going to trust reviews on Yelp where there's more of them on a restaurant than less. It's more accurate. I'm also going to see perhaps here how many people are using it over 1 million active installs. If I'm, if I'm choosing between two five-star Twitter plugins, but one of them's got 10,000 users, and one of them's got 1,000 users, I might go to the 10,000 one because uh, it might be better. More people like that one. I could then use that one too, and it'll work well for me too. Pretty important here, is it compatible with my version of WordPress? I might have a, a version that is that is too old or too new for this plugin. I believe it still lets you install non-compatible plugins, but you might get weird behavior, you might get broken functionality, worst case scenario, corrupted database, who knows. You should make sure that your plugin that you want to use is compatible with your version of WordPress. And then you want to also look here, last updated. These all of these plugins, just like everything computer related, deep down is code. Someone, a team of people, one person, whatever, wrote code to make an app or a website or a plugin. And therefore, since people write code, people can make mistakes. And that's how bugs in software happen. That's how software gets hacked. That's how you know problems happen with software the code has a little problem and it causes a big problem. So if you're gonna think about downloading a plugin, you wanna think about using plugins that are relatively recently updated. Uh, because, uh, let's say, a, there hasn't been an update to a plugin in a year. Only one year. Actually, one year is a long time in internet time because that's a whole year for someone to figure out a broken plugin, how to exploit that plugin on your site to get into your site. There's so many examples of someone breaking into a site, otherwise 
we thought that was secure because the plugin was not secure. Someone didn't fix a hole in their plugin, and now your site is insecure. So I'm going to say try to get plugins that have been updated within three months. Now that is a quarter of a year, so that might be pushing it. Maybe, you know, one month. But if that plugin that you want to use is over a year old, two years old, you know, that's a long time for someone to exploit it, to figure out an exploit. This one was updated three weeks ago, a kismet. Jetpack was updated four days ago. Some of these plugins that have a lot of people using them, the author is usually very good at updating because when you're that big, you're a target. That's why Windows, you often hear Windows computers are full of viruses because they're the biggest target. They've got 80% market share. Macs get viruses too, but they're not as big of a target, so you don't hear about it as much. And same thing with WordPress. It's the biggest target. WordPress is the biggest word, uh, website development software. And people make plugins and themes and widgets. And if someone's not on top of their code, their security, then your site might be vulnerable. And again, we'll talk about updates later. HSMIT is one of the sites I recommend. They feature it too. Jetpack is also featured. We'll get it later. What else do they feature? BuddyPress helps you build any type of community. I haven't really used it much, but it's popular. WP Supercache is supposed to be about speeding up your site. As I've tested it a bit myself, I don't quite feel it's all it's cracked up to be, so I don't have too much of a good or bad opinion about it. BB Press never used it. Theme Checker never used it. There's a couple of featured ones. Let's look at some popular plugins. Google Analytics by Monster Insights. WooCommerce, there's WooCommerce. Hello Dolly is popular, supposedly. Not really. Two stars. Updated eight months ago. Security vulnerability. W3 Total Cash. That's another one related to WP Super Cash. They both claim to speed up your site. This one's got 3,000 reviews. This one's got 800 reviews. So why is this one more featured than this one? Kickbacks. Uh, Word Defense Security. This is one I recommend. I didn't mention it in my notes, but I recommend this one. Word Defense Security. This is a way for you to check the security of your site. Very popular. Well reviewed. Updated five days ago. I'm just kind of browsing around here. I'm not going to list them all. Of course, I don't know all the plugins. There's thousands of them. But the one I noticed right here, here's Yoast SEO. I was going to search for it. There's a search box at the top, but it's also listed here. Improve your WordPress SEO. Write better content and have a fully optimized WordPress site using Yoast SEO plugin from Team Yoast. So this is the plugin I want. If you, if you find it here, scroll down a little bit. You'll find Yoast SEO hopefully and click install now. <coughs> it's going to connect back to the WordPress.org site. This is why I'm saying only have the plugins that you need because it's going to be checking itself every once in a while. Is there a new version 3.3? And if you've got 12 plugins, they're all going to be checking every once in a while, and they're all going to be slowing you down. Whenever we find a plugin, we install it, and then we have to, if we're going to use it, activate it. So remember to click Activate there. Click Activate Plugin. You might get a pop-up that says, congratulations, you've got Yoast. Click to start the tour. No thanks. So just click close. And what this plugin did is it added a brand new section here, SEO, just like Duplicator did. So we've got a brand new screen in our dashboard where we can do all of this stuff here, tools, 
general settings and setup and all of that, social media setup, all of that. We're not going to get into it. You need to explore it on your own. This is one of the ones I recommend to optimize your site for the search engines. In my SEO class, I talk about this site and I go into it in more, I mean, about this plugin and I go into it in more detail. Um, but what, I, what I'll say in general about this plugin is if you go back to your posts, hover over posts and click all posts, what the Yoast plugin does that's very useful is here under the list of all of your articles, it gives you a column of SEO and it gives you a bullet point, color coded. At the moment it's gray because I have not started to optimize that, that, that article yet. As I then go through the process, as Yoast recommends me, to optimize page by page, it'll then tell me either then uh, red dot, which is badly optimized, orange and yellow, I forget the order of the two, which is medium optimized, and then green, you've optimized it really well. So Yoast adds a new column to all your posts, and your pages, and your products, so that you can optimize each one. You can optimize the whole thing, and that has some value, which is under the general settings of, of SEO. But what you really use Yoast for is to go page by page, screen by screen of your site, and on each one, optimize. What does optimize mean? Take the SEO class. But this plugin helps you to do that. When you say page by page, you go to all the posts, all the categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the posts, all the pages, categories. When we get to products, we want to optimize our products too. Just every screen that the uh, that the user will see. Yes. Question. No. So Yoast is one of them, and then the other one is SEO all in one pack, whatever it's called. That's another good one. Other people tell me it's very good. I haven't used it myself. I've used this one mostly, but they're all doing the same thing, allowing you to optimize your site page by page. Let's go back to plugins, add new. This time I'm just going to take a quick look at recommended, the recommended tab up here. In my case, it is recommending one that I recommend also called Contact Form 7. WordPress has a basic contact form feature, but a more specialized one like this, um, a more specialized one like this is, is more powerful. And this is the one I recommend. It's obviously reviewed very well, very active, but it's incompatible. So that most likely means that we need to uh, probably update our WordPress. It keeps telling me anyway, WordPress 4.5 is available. We're not going to do updates just yet. We have a, we'll talk about that another day. But just keep in mind here, this particular plugin that I like and a lot of people is currently not compatible with this version of WordPress that we have. I think we've got like version 4.1 and, and it keeps telling us get 4.5. So that'll be something to deal with later. But Contact Form 7 is one of the ones I recommend. See, there's the all-in-one SEO pack. Here's broken link checker. That's related like the redirection plugin. Um, I, I want to add the that redirection plugin and then we'll move on 
from our discussion of plugins. But if I don't see a plugin listed under Featured, Popular, or Recommended, I have Search. So on the right side, click on the, the search box. We'll type Redirection. And press Enter. And you should see, um, well, I, I see 2,000 results, 2,301 items. And again, how do you know the good ones? You look at the ratings, is it compatible, how many users, all of that. And the one, and also you listen to your instructor, because I'm the one telling you right here, <laughs> Redirection by John Godley, that's the one that I'm talking about. Any others? might not be what you think it is. But this one with those plants, whatever those are, it's Redirection by John Godley. Updated three weeks ago, it's compatible, has over half a million installs, well-reviewed, 202 reviews. Before we install it, click on More Details. Because this little description here is fine, but if you're looking for your own Facebook plugin, this description might not be enough. It might sound the same as every other Facebook plugin. Click on More Details. We'll get more details. The author will write more about it. It's 100% free. New features include this and that. Existing features are this. It's in English. It's in uh, Hindi. It's in Italian, etc. Click here for more. It's got uh, how do you install it. Uh, it's usually just click install. Change log. This is useful, but it's a little technical, and we'll have a discussion on this later. But the change log here tells you what's different for every new version. So it fixed this, and it added that, and it made this better. So it's uh, the change log. What has changed? Here you go back in, in history, all the way back to version 2. Just informational. And there's the FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions. People might have certain issues from time to time. The FAQ might list it right here. Then you've got reviews. This is what I said about reviews. Okay, so this person right here right away says, I got hacked thanks to this plugin, April 20th. Okay, so one star, he wrote what his problem was. And then this one again does not work with WordPress 4.5. This one says it's beautiful. This one says it's fantastic. This one says it works. This one didn't give any stars, but then uh, wrote some review. But overall, in the history, out of 202 stars, yes, we saw two terrible reviews early on. But in the whole history of 202 reviews, it skews toward almost five stars. So notice that people really love it and then taper down, and a couple people don't. But if, if this is all over the place or if it skews more toward negative, then that should be telling you it's probably not a good plugin. Don't don't you know don't get the aggravation, don't expose yourself to trouble and all of that. Now, this was written on the 20th when this person said it's not compatible, but I saw here on the change log, they've updated it. Yeah, so the author's on top of it. I'm sure a new version is coming out soon. And what else? Version 2.4, last updated, requires this and that, reviews, contributor, there's the actual author, John Godley, you can click on there and see their site and ask for tech support and all of that. Go ahead and click install now. Let it install, and then remember to click Activate Plugin. The thing about... Yeah, let me go back to my notes here and say... Where is my plugin? 
there doesn't seem to be like a consensus. Like the the developers of all of these plugins never never had a meeting and agreed to some things. They never agreed where should your plugin show up. We saw that with uh, Duplicator and Yoast SEO, they give themselves a nice menu. That's one place where your plugin might might end up. in the dashboard sidebar. You might get a brand new icon. Maybe at the very bottom, usually at the very bottom, some of them at the very top. So you're looking for your plugin, I don't see it down at the bottom, oh it's at the top. So your plugin might end up in the sidebar. It might end up in the settings menu. Some plugins create a sub menu item in the settings menu. So, what I mean here is if I hover over settings, I might get a brand new item here. I don't have all of these screens memorized, but I might notice oh, I've got an extra one. I've installed a plugin, it didn't give itself its own item here, it went into settings. That's one possibility. It might also end up in the tools menu. Again, these developers never had a get together and figured it out. Maybe uh, maybe there is some official WordPress documentation, but no one listens to it because I've never seen much consistency. This particular plugin, for example, is under tools. Under tools, redirection. And it's not obvious at all. I, I never I never looked at tools recently, so I don't know what's there. But this one ends up there. Those are the three big places, and sometimes you also see them in the plugins menu. Within the plugins menu, they might be part of the menu, but they will always at least be visible in the plugin screen. All your plugins are always visible here because this is where you manage them. And sometimes in the plugin screen, you will also see settings for a plugin. So they're all over the place. Yoast has settings there too. These settings are the same as the settings here. This settings of redirection is the same as tools. So there's no consistency, unfortunately. And then the last place. Widgets. You might have added this plugin to give you Facebook, a Facebook stream, a Facebook feed. Where did it go? Oh, it's a plugin. So you have to go look on the. Uh, it's a widget. So you have to go look in the widgets screen. So you have to do a little detective work sometimes. So how do you use this plugin? We'll talk about it more in the advanced class, but you can go explore it if you want. You can go look at the tools, redirection, bunch of screens, I don't know what it means. We'll get to it later, but this is going to start to keep track of your broken links and how you fix them and use, and use it to fix them. Again, with this WAMP server version of our, of our of our website. It's completely a playground. You can mess with it and break it, and you can bring it back to life. We're going to have a break, and then after the break we'll talk a little bit about the uh, service providers. Because, okay, what if we're excited, we've worked, you know, two weeks, three weeks on this stuff, and uh, we're thinking about putting it online now. We're going to have a discussion after the break about that, service providers, and we'll wrap up the class. Then we'll have next week, which is, which is uh, part two of the class. Let's take one last break. It's 2.54. We'll be back at uh, 3.04. We'll go on. <laughs>